Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here again from Scratch. Today we are checking out Pico 8. Now, Pico 8 is a fantasy console. In fact, it's probably the premier fantasy console. And the entire idea behind fantasy consoles is they are a software-only implementation of a limited set of hardware and generally a programming environment to go with it. By making it yourself work in a constrained environment, you get left hung up on you know technical details and what tools should I use and all that. And instead, you just start working creatively. And that's the entire idea behind it. Now, Pico 8 is available at... Well, here, uh, Lex I'll link that in the link down below. Uh, but the reason why I'm talking about Pico 8 today is it's actually available on sale for a very, very short period of time from this point on. So right now, Pico 8 is it's, it's a limited set of hardware. So it's a 128 by 128, 16 colors, 32K, four channel sound. It's Lua powered or a custom version of Lua is the programming language behind the scenes. It contains up to 256 8 by 8 sprites and a map contains 128 by 32 8 by 8 sprites to create your levels. Now, you can actually do some really impressive things here. You can actually create straight up 3D games using Pico 8. And it's also got all of the tools you need to create, to share, to, to get other people's work, and so on. And it works on a very limited device. You can see here, it's normally 15 bucks. But the reason why I'm talking about it today is it's actually part of the... Um, the Justice Bundle running on itch.io that is not running for a lot longer. So if you want to pick it up right now, this is the cheapest you've ever been able to pick up Pico 8 as well as supporting charity. So I already did a video on this bundle. It's a bundle for racial, just, racial justice and equality. It is ending in 14 hours. By the time I get this video up, you're probably looking 12 to 13 hours left. So if you want to grab Pico 8 cheap, now is the time to do it. I've never seen it this cheap ever in the past. Plus you can get a ton of other assets. Again, I did another video about that bundle if you're interested in learning more. Also, here is the documentation on Pico 8 kind of gives you a rundown of all of the tools, all of the keys, the programming model, and everything else that's involved. So this is Pico 8. Now, i got to warn you, I am capturing system sound here, so you're going to get some beeps and bloops as we go forward. And without further ado, let us fire up Pico 8. Now, when you first launch it or you first download it, it comes down as a very, very simple um, zip file. So as you can see right here, oops, I'm going off on the wrong screen. It's just this folder like so, and you just go ahead, extract it out, and then run Pico 8. It's tiny, absolutely tiny. And here you go. You are now at the Pico 8 console. It's kind of like loading up a Commodore 64 with the kind of user interface you're dealing with. At any time, you can type help, and you get details of what you're doing here. But what you're going to probably want to do is hit escape. This will bring you into the tools. The tools are all integrated, and they're very straightforward and simple. The first one you're in right now is the, um, the code editor as mentioned earlier this is uh it uh what you can do here you're typing a subset of lua uh, so they've done their own class libraries you don't get the lua libraries and uh, there's a lot of code here included for basically traditional game development so this is where you do your code editing uh, you can have multiple code files as you can see right here with their tabs of sort uh, available right there if it's empty they automatically get rid of it so that is your code editor after the code editor oh one thing to point out here another limitation you have 8192 tokens so each Thing with a space is a token. So you see I'm at four of my tokens. That's a built-in limitation. So that is as complex as your code can get. So you are going to be working within the constraints here. Next up, we're going to go over to the sprite editor. You can see it available right here. So we can go ahead and basically just start drawing sprites. we got tools here to control the size of our brush, like so. Um, we got a fixed color palette over there. We can change that size back down like so. So there we've done one. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'll create a new sprite here. So you can have up to, I think it was 256 sprites. Let's create a tree, make this as small as possible. So we got simple tools for painting and drawing built in. Yeah, yeah, that's a tree, right? All right, so now let's go ahead, give it a trunk. There. So there is our lovely tree. That's amazing, isn't it? It's the best work you've ever seen. So once you're done with it, you've got, again, tools down here. You can stamp from the, uh, the clipboard, copy, uh, pan around. You've got a flood fill that actually does a decent job. So let's go ahead and do one more and I'll show you that. And you got shape tools. In this case, we're going to use a circle. So let's go ahead and make a red ball. I think it's cornered. No, it's not centered. All right. We also got undo, by the way. So there we go. Created a circle and let's fill it with orange. So flood fill. So you go. So you got very simple graphic tools there. And then the cells you create, you go over here, you see they're available as a palette. You could have multiple pages of them, by the way. And up here is your level. Uh, so I can just start. Oh, I'm in fill mode right there. So there, I just filled the level with that guy, or I could do individually and start pasting individual. So this is basically how you create your game maps in this guy. Um, 
I forget. Oh yeah, it just toggles your interface on and off. So that is the next up tool. Then we go into where I'm going to make your ears bleed. This is a straightforward sound editor. You basically start creating sounds or notes that you can then string together to create music in a tracker-like environment. So go over here, and you're going to see we're just going to draw our waveform. So we've got various different options. So we can do like a square wave here, and then just basically left mouse button and start drawing it. Space bar to play, and then we can change the speed. Like that. And basically, that's the gist of it. So we could go here, do, go make a second sound. We could use a different form here. here. Let's just do it that way. We can slow that down. 16 is probably going to be too fast. So again, just come in here, draw your waveform, and play spacebar. There you go. So we got two different sounds to work with. Now we go over to the music editor. works like a tracker style program. So we can go over here and pick that way, or we can come back here and pick this way. So it's going to go here. So we got to pick between there's our sound zero. I'll go here, and we'll pick... Sorry, that was sound one and sound zero. We'll play those together. There you go. So we've made a horrific sound. If you go into the uh, um, the documentation, there's a lot of things you could do here for fade in, fade out, and so on. There's special effects you can add in. There's a lot more than what I'm covering here, but you get the basic gist. So you use all these things together. So you got the scripting, you got the sprite editor, the map editor, the sound editor, and then the music editor. You put all those together to basically create everything you need to create a game. And then you're going to access things based by index in your code. So you play sound 01 or you play um, image 01, etc. Very strip, simple and straightforward approach. So at any particular time, I can go ahead and press escape, exit out. There's commands to go ahead and save what we've worked on. You see up here, I can just do save and then the name of what I want to save. There's also tools built into Pico 8 for exporting out to various different platforms. You can have it create an HTML5 document. You can have it create a special PNG file that you can send off and share with people that can run it in their own version of Pico 8, etc. Or another thing that we can do that's really cool is we can explore or explore. So S-P-L-O-R-E, throw that in here and then you get this simple interface. We've got feature, new, and so on. So we're going to go to the features and we're going to go ahead and run one. So these things can be from really straightforward things like, um, you know, match match three style games to platformers. You'll be impressed by just how many are on here. And any one of these, you just go ahead, pick it up. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you this one. This is a uh, racing game. Again, sound is on. So if it blows out your ears, I apologize for that. So get hit enter to select it and we'll go ahead and run that cart. All right. So here we go. We can go to practice or race. I'll just go ahead and practice and we'll continue on. Uh, I think it's, uh, let's see, it's X. All right, so here we'll pick our tracks. So you see here we've got full 3D effects going on with this guy. And it's like it's like Stunt Racer of yore. So I think it's, oop, X is reverse. All right, so I'm using Z to go forward or Z, depending on where you're from, and then arrow keys to drive. So as you can see, you can do some really kind of cool games from that 8-bit era, and you're not limited to just 2D tiled. It's actually... I'll, I'll actually stop so you don't get blown out by the sound. It's actually really impressive what some people have managed to make Pico 8 do. And really, when you're limited by the hardware, it really opens up your creativity. And that's the entire idea and appeal behind these fantasy consoles. But the Splore really kind of makes it interesting because it gives everybody access to all of these these games and platforms and so on. So if I go back here and I'm back out, so I'm back at the command line now. So if I hit escape again, we're going to come in here, go back to the code, you're going to notice something. I have all of the code for that game I was just looking at. So here's the, the main code that made that work. So when you share uh, a Pico 8 game, you're also sharing all the resources and such that go with it. So these are this is the code. This is the track generation code, for example. Now, I personally find 8-bit style fonts and reading this just I buggingly painful. I, I personally, uh, this isn't for me, but the funny thing you'll also notice right here is, remember I told you there's that limitation? Well, this is one of those games that's butting right up against it. So it's giving you an idea. These people are basically pushing Pico 8 to the limit of what it can do. And here you see all the various different pieces that they went together. So you can see how, how far they have gone with the tools. Uh, and uh, we also, all the various different sounds that they worked with made things work are all in here. Uh, the music that they created is also here as well. So if you go ahead and download someone else's work from something like Splore, you can really jump in and see what Pico 8 can really do, much more so than what I could ever show you. So it's a really cool virtual console, basically. You loaded up the executable, and it's as if you had your own virtual Commodore 64 type environment to go ahead and develop in. Just you're using a really friendly Lua programming language uh, to get things going. So again, if you want to learn more, uh, head on over here to the documentation. They have full instructions on basically everything I was just talking about. So as I said, there's some advanced tools there for uh, working with sound effects, the special effects you can do. There's details here on Lua, the subset that's involved, the classes and extensions that they have made. It kind of just keeps going and going. Everything you need is ultimately here. So um, 
It's a really interesting virtual console process, and I will say once again, it is regularly $15, and for the next about, uh, say, 12, 13 hours, you can pick it up as part of the uh, the bundle right now, the, the Justice Bundle running over on itch.io. So I will have everything down below in the linked article. Let me know what you think. Have you used Pico 8, or have you used other fantasy consoles? Uh, I know I published a video early at the beginning of uh, the whole COVID outbreak about Pixel Vision. It's kind of really similar to this, but... Uh, a bit more modernized in the approach to some of the tooling, a lot more eye candy on top. Uh, it's also currently available for free. At least it was. I should check again, see if it's still going away for free. Uh, but really, uh, it's a great time if you want to get into these you know, retro but modern ways to develop unlimited hardware. Anyways, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.